Welcome everybody to today's tutorial. The first step to setting up your new blog or website is to set a, or register your domain name and set up a hosting account and I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're going to break it up into two steps. The first step I'm going to show you where to get your domain name at a discount and how to integrate that with your web hosting account and then the second step uh, we'll show you how to install a CMS, probably WordPress for most of the tutorials and set up and configure the basic uh, default settings and which plugins to install and which ones to eliminate. So for all beginners, I recommend that you go with a company called Bluehost. And if you go to my blog, cleverleverage.com, I'll show you where to get the coupon code. <clears throat> if you go to the top right hand corner of your screen and type in Bluehost coupon, it should bring up the 2016 Bluehost, 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 Bluehost discount coupon codes with the little dog on it. Click on that. I'm going to show you why I have this page here in a second, but first, let me tell you why I recommend Bluehost for beginners. In this price range, which is the sub $5 a month web hosting companies, um, this Bluehost is the only company that I've found to have really good phone support with native English speaking Americans that answer the phone and don't put you on hold forever and ever and can actually solve your problems if you do have an issue when you call. That's pretty much the only reason that I recommend them. Um, I've been in the business for six to eight years now and I've used probably about 30 to 35 web hosting companies. And for a beginner, it's really not, while they don't have like the fastest hardware in the industry, you don't really need that when you're just starting out and it's not really worth it to go with a more expensive company um, because the phone support and everything else is going to be the same. Uh, so you might as well save your dollars and use those on other marketing things that will really uh, get you good results. So what I wanted to show you is I am an affiliate for Bluehost um, and sometimes they will send us out promo codes and things of that nature. Like for example, last weekend was a Memorial Day and they sent us this. Affiliates get these promo emails. They, they had a special for like $2.95 for six or 12 months, or this one's 12 months. So for 12 months of hosting, you get it for $2.95 instead of $3.95. So it saves you 10 or 15 bucks um, on the long run. And they also give you the domain name for free. But sometimes these links change. So what I've done is put together a Bluehost coupon code page on cleverleverage.com and then I will geez if the internet will cooperate here what's going on hello seems we have an internet issue that's not good it's gonna mess up my tutorial man what are you doing to me man <laughs> it should load in a second I think uh, I'm uploading so many YouTube videos right now it's uh, flooding the <laughs> Uh, bandwidth that I have here. Anyway, so what I've done is whenever they have um, sales or coupons and stuff like that, I attach them to this page and I update this URL. Like if you can see in the bottom left hand corner of my uh, screen, it's Bluehost 40 off right now. So over the weekend it was Bluehost like 55 off or something like that. So if you just go to Clever Leverage and search for Bluehost coupon and find this page, it should be the latest deal that will give you the biggest discount. So if you just click on that, it'll open uh, Bluehost and automatically apply the discount. Like right now, it's three ninety five. I pay seven ninety nine, so I didn't get a deal at all back when I signed up. <laughs> uh, but I just want to go through some of these plan options so that you know. So there's no question about what you need and what you don't need because there's a bunch of stuff on here that you don't really need. The biggest thing with selecting a plan is one thing. It comes down to one thing only. How many websites do you want to have? If you think you might want to have two domain names, you want to go with the plus plan. Uh, the thing about the basic plan is it does limit you to one domain name and one website. So most people go for the plus, uh, but I'm going to select the basic. We'll just assume that you want to have one website. Click on select. I'll show you how to sign up. If you have a domain name in mind, I'm going to use a dummy one. We'll just call it Bob's Roofing by Matt. I've already signed up, so we're not going to do this again and mess up my existing account here. So what it's going to do is check and make sure that Bob's Roofing by Matt is available. The reason why it does this is because with Bluehost, they register your domain name for you for free if you sign up for six months of web hosting or more. So it goes out and double checks and makes sure no one has registered this before. If it's not available, it'll give you a screen that says, I'm sorry, this domain is already taken. And just go back and enter in something else. The account information stuff is self-explanatory. Just enter in your information here. Make sure that you use an email address that you have access to right away because 
you're going to get a welcome email and I'll show you exactly what it looks like in just a minute and you'll need the login details or at least the link that's in there. So there's a couple other things that I want to point out. Um, obviously you can see the tiered discount here if you do 36 months to give you more of a discount. If you do 24, if you do 12, or if, um, the biggest thing that I wanted to show you is most of the stuff that you don't need like the site lock it's just a security measure but it's not necessary site backup pro you don't really need that I can show you how to um, back up your website for free in another tutorial just search cleverleverage.com we've got tons of I got tons of tutorials coming out on all this stuff this is the only thing that I want to go over with you domain privacy protection is important for some people and not others let me show you what the difference is if you hover over this more information click on it when you register your domain name, there is a who is entry that's generated for the, the registrant. It's much like property taxes or the, the county property appraiser websites. Um, if you own a piece of property, there's usually a public a registration of the ownership. This domain name registration works the same way. If you have a PO box or a UPS box or something like that that you can use um, as the registrant contact or address, you don't really need to buy domain privacy protection. If you use your home address, it's up to you if you want that information to be public or not. It really depends on what you plan to do with the website. If it's nothing controversial, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. But if it is, I would definitely get the domain privacy protection. So that way, it lists Bluehost as the registrant instead of you. And they can't see your home address from a simple Google search. So I'll let you decide if you want to get that or not. It's not a big deal. It's only 99 cents a month uh, extra. So other than that, you don't really need any of these other options. It's kind of a waste of money. Um, go ahead and enter your credit card information and all this stuff. Click the confirm button and hit submit. And then once you do that, it usually takes about five minutes to get a welcome email. And I'm gonna pull mine up and show you exactly what it looks like. So in about five minutes or so, if they're really slow, it can take up to 15 minutes, but it's usually between two to five minutes. You'll get a welcome email that looks exactly like this. It just says welcome Bluehost and it'll have your account details in here whatever domain you picked mine first one when I first set up my blue hosting or Bluehost hosting account was start a blog in 20 that was my very first tutorial that I ever did um, obviously it doesn't show you your password and stuff but you'll need to you probably remember it from when you created your account the next thing that you want to do at the very top where it says log into your account this blue button you just click on get started and it will take you to the correct login page and just enter in your username and your password here and click on submit once you do that it will log you into the correct location oh come on with the pop-ups I don't know if you're like me but I hate pop-ups <laughs> still good service though uh, so what we want to do is now we're logged into your Bluehost account we want to go down to the website tab and click on install WordPress WordPress is the free CMS that we're going to use to power your website It'll give you the ability to add and remove pages without any coding experience necessary, no computer experience required, and I'll show you step by step how to use it um, later on in the tutorial. First, we have to install it though. So this is the WordPress one-click installer. It'll allow you to install it without having to download or upload any files, which is great. One thing I do want to note is <clears throat> when I first created my uh, Bluehost account, my domain name was starting a blog or start a blog in 20. You're going to want to select the only domain name that should be in here which is the one that you registered when you signed up I've created a subdomain because you can't install another website on top of a website so I'm going to use tutorials.startablogin20 just to show you how this works um, I didn't want to leave anything out of the tutorial so I didn't want to skip this step and then just expect you to know how to do it so I wanted it to be complete start to finish you're gonna click on your domain name which is going to be I think the one that I dummy one that I used in the beginning was Bob's Roofing by Matt. Uh, it's going to be whichever one you selected. And then you're going to want to click on check domain. And what's happening right now is the system is making sure that the domain name is already configured with the web hosting account. And if it's not, it's taking care of it for you. And if you remember in the very beginning when I said one of the reasons that I recommend Bluehost to all beginners, uh, this is another reason why it's very beneficial. If you don't know how to set up DNS entries or point domain names um, to web hosting accounts with name server settings and things like that, it can be very cumbersome to learn and frustrating. So this is another benefit of using Bluehost and they automatically take care of it for you. Now what you want to do is hit these two checkboxes. When you hit the first one, it'll show you the advanced options. I recommend that you change this site name or title. I'm just going to go with um, 
what was it, Bob's roofing by Matt or whatever I said. Uh, the admin username, I'm going to change mine to just Matt. You can leave it whatever you want. The admin password, now you can change this, but I would recommend that you leave it computer generated so that it's safe and secure. If you just use like Matt12, it's going to easily get hacked and everything else. Um, you, you'd want to leave this checked, automatically create a new database for this installation. If you don't do that, it won't work. Um, go ahead and check this box for I have read the terms and conditions. And then just click on install now. <clears throat> now while this is happening, if you scroll to the top of the page, um, as the page reloads, you'll get a status bar that takes over the header of the page. And when it's finished, it'll usually turn orange and you'll be able to view the details of your um, WordPress install. I guess while it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's orange when it's finished, it's blue uh, while it's installing. If you click on this little view details, you can see what's happening. Right now it's grabbing the WordPress install files. Sometimes this can take up to two minutes or so for it to do its thing. Um, like I said, we're flooding the internet right now with YouTube uploads, so this might go a little slower um, than normal. But once it is finished, the status bar will turn orange, and then you will be able to click on um, the install details and get your login URL and password. So we'll just kind of wait and let it do its. Blah, blah, blah. Can't talk today. We'll kind of wait and let it do its thing, and then we'll pick up uh, where we left off in just a second. Oh, well, that was quick. I didn't even have to pause the video or anything. So click on view credentials on the orange status bar. It'll reload the page and give you a notification center right here. What we want to do, this is for something else. It should just say your WordPress install is finished. You want to click on view. And then when it does that, it's going to give you the username, the password, and also the admin URL. So what you want to do is note the username copy the password because you're going to need that click on this and it'll open that in a new tab it's going to be tutorials or whatever we, we chose for this demonstration no don't automatically log me in <laughs> LastPass is trying to take over again so we'll just enter in the username and the password on the WordPress login page and click login all it is is the username and the password that's listed here Obviously, I will delete this after I make the tutorial so we don't have hackers come along and wreck all my stuff. And just so you know, also, when I do individual tutorials, uh, like say we did a daycare website, it's not going to be tutorials.startablog20. I have a real live demo that you can look at. It would be like daycares.cleverwebsitebuilder.com. Or if we did one for a, construct or a construction company or a contractor, it would be contractors.cleverwebsitebuilder.com. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to set up the account in full. And since I already did that, uh, I needed to create a new subdomain account for us to, or for me to show you every single step. So, ah, my last pass is trying to take over again. So what'll happen is, this is your defer default WordPress install. And <clears throat> I wanna show you how to delete a few things that can be really annoying. Just like you saw pop-ups on the other page, uh, this can also have pop-ups, but there's an easy way to get rid of them. The first thing that we're going to do is go to plugins. This is really step two of configuring your WordPress installation uh, on your hosting account. The first thing that we're going to do, you see all these crazy pop-ups and stuff that's a distraction. It's really going to take away from you being able to pay attention in the tutorial and from me being able to do a good job in showing you what to do. So we're just going to delete all of this junk. Right down here, we're going to scroll down and bulk select all of these plugins just by checking this box. And then under bulk actions, we're just going to click delete and then select apply. It's going to prompt you to make sure you want to delete these files. You cannot delete a plugin. Oh, you have to deactivate them first. I'm sorry. Some of these may be activated already. So bulk select them, click deactivate, select apply. It's just a, an extra little click, extra step. Then bulk select them again <laughs> and click delete. That's kind of a security, a safety measure to make sure that you don't accidentally delete stuff that you do want. And then go ahead and select yes, delete these files and data. Now we won't have any crazy pop-ups. Go back to the main dashboard right here. This is the first selection on the left hand side of the menu. And now we won't have any crazy um, pop-ups here. You can click and drag and move this stuff around if you want to. Uh, 
The next thing I want to show you is what the website itself looks like right now. It's basically a default black and white WordPress install. Don't worry about that. I know it looks shitty, uh, but it's very easy to change that within one click. I want to show you how to configure and get rid of all this dummy stuff because you don't want things that say hello world and, and all this junk. So the first thing we're going to do is just we're going to go down the list. We're going to click on posts. This is a fully capable blogging platform as well as a website builder. So we want to get rid of any posts that may show if you do happen to have a blog or want to in the future. So we're just going to click, we're going to hover over hello world and click on trash. And you don't have to do this, but just so you can see what it's doing, I'm going to refresh this page and now nothing is found and it gets rid of the junk. That's what we're doing. So we're going to go down the list and just get rid of the default uh, stuff that's in the way. We're going to go to pages and we're going to click on trash, crash, or crash, trash the sample page. Then we're going to go to um, users. and that's me hello <laughs> click on edit that should be your username and then there's a thing here that's called toolbar and I want to uncheck it because I want to if you can see when you're logged in you have an admin toolbar up here but that kind of confuses you about what the site looks like so I want to disable it so that when we're in the tutorial you don't get it there's no confusion about um, you know if other visitors would see that and how it affects the way the site looks so make sure that this show toolbar when viewing site is unchecked Go ahead and click update profile. And again, you don't have to look at the front end, but if you just refresh, now that toolbar is gonna to be gone. And this is what the site will actually look like when we get to, uh, when we get around to building it. Next thing we're gonna do is go to settings. I want you to double check a few things in here and make sure that um, this email address is an email address that you have access to. Because if it's not and you lose the password, you won't be able to reset it very easily. If you put an email address in here and you lose the login credentials, you can just do a password reset and it will email you right away. You probably want to get rid of this um, tagline like the just another WordPress site. Uh, I'll just do my dummy thing of WordPress or uh, roofing services in Orlando, Florida since my dummy name is Bob's Roofing by Matt. Go ahead and click save changes. And then once that saves, like I said, you'll never have an issue with the administrator URL or uh, email address or anything like that. There's not much in the writing tab that you need to be concerned with, but there is in the reading tab or uh, the discussion tab. Click on discussion. Now, by default, WordPress has a blogging capability. Like I said before, you you can choose to use it or not. One of the things that I like to do, there's a lot of spam bots out there, and I don't like it when they try to post. Um, to anywhere where you can comment or anything like that. So I uncheck these boxes that says email me whenever anyone tries to post a comment or anything else. You also want to check this box. A comment must be manually approved. And then you want to change this value to one. Hold a comment in the queue if it contains one or more links. Most of the spam bots are just trying to post links to websites that allow that type of functionality. And then also you would want to select users must be registered and logged in to comment. That will eliminate a lot of that stuff. And then also select this, automatically close comments on articles older than 14 days. If you decide to build out a blog and you want to change that, just come back in here and update it to however many days you want to keep them open. And most importantly, scroll down and click Save Changes. This process is the same for every single site that I set up. It doesn't matter which um, type of website or blog you want to uh, build. As long as you're logged into the back end, if anybody comments, you'll obviously see a notification for it immediately. You don't need to be getting a ton of emails and all this other bullshit. Um, it's just kind of annoying. Next, we want to go to permalinks. There's a setting in here that I want uh, to change. So right now, it has ugly permalinks, which are, if you create a page, it's going to be question mark page equals one, two, three. We don't want that. If we create an about page, we want it to say forward slash about. So we're going to change the permalink structure to post name. And just by clicking this radio button, it will automatically put the post name structure in there. So leave it on post name and click on save changes. And that's it. Your WordPress website is ready to go. Now that concludes step two. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to easily customize the look and feel of the WordPress website in less than 60 seconds. And in order to do that, we're going to head over to the Appearance tab where you can adjust the color codes, the uh, theme installation, and everything else.